25 years later, and millions of passionate users, here we are again showcasing another powerful release of SOLIDWORKS. Like the rest of 2020, this release is unlike any other we ever had. More than ever, it has become apparent that the future of design is collaboration. Today, you'll see how we've married SOLIDWORKS with the 3D Experience platform and how that may benefit you, our users. You'll see great enhancements inside of SOLIDWORKS 2021 as well as powerful workflows showcasing the 3D Experience platform, all while leveraging your preferred CAD system, SOLIDWORKS. My name is Jonathan Shargary and I welcome you to the very first Solid Experience event. For the first time, we are presenting everywhere in New England. We have more than 100 new features chosen just for you, among the 200 improvements made by SOLIDWORKS 2021. In addition to being able to attend the presentations live, you will be able to watch them later. Like every year, my team work hard to learn and understand how each new feature can improve your daily work. Whether you're a designer, project manager, quality control, or on the shop floor, SOLIDWORKS 2021 and the 3D Experience platform will take your design and collaboration to a whole new level. In the next few minutes, Steven, John, Changping, Benoit and I will show you what's new in SOLIDWORKS and its add-ons. And now, I will let my team take over the presentation. Thank you, Jonathan. As we can see here in the uh, presented graph, SOLIDWORKS R&D is generally broken up into several categories for development effort and so forth. And in addition to the just improvement of functionality and integration, quality and performance is a big part of the effort. This year in particular for SOLIDWORKS 2021, more than 58% of all development resources and effort were dedicated to purely quality and performance items. Uh, this is a notable increase, and this will be shown effectively throughout our presentation today. Also, to close um, existing items from prior releases, the closure rate of SPR items for SOLIDWORKS 2021 is increased 25% over the prior year, and this is the largest of such increase since um, all the way back to 2015. In general, SPRs are categorized into five different severity levels. Severity one and two items being the most critical, severity three and four items perhaps not being functionality stopping, but are daily occurrences for a majority of users, and severity five items are actually items that are flagged by SOLIDWORKS themselves as not meeting the overall UI quality uh, standards that they set for themselves. The overall goal uh, which continues through um, into 2021 and beyond is to reduce the overall severity of SPRs, so these are categories one and two, uh, to well below 10%. This is a close-up of the Square Robot, which is our showcase for the presentations today. Square Robot is an industrial robot developed for harsh underwater environments or in fluid environments, built by a firm in Boston, Massachusetts and in development since 2016. The um, innovative approach with submersible robotics, advanced sensor technology and other mechanical aspects greatly reduce the need for personnel to be exposed to harsh environments and will offer Square Robot customers significant cost and time savings in having their facilities inspected by this robotic development. This will be a showcase assembly for all the presentations today. And we'll be breaking these presentations up into two primary categories. First, we're going to take a look at what's new in SOLIDWORKS desktop applications. And then we're going to further take a look at what's new in the 3D experience platform uh, cloud-based applications as well. The entire experience being tied together by 3D experience works SOLIDWORKS edition. For today, we're going to take a look more explicitly at 
expanded functionality for SOLIDWORKS 2021. These are new functions added completely to the software. Performance gains in SOLIDWORKS 2021 over prior releases, uh, both in graphical, file performance, rebuild times, and so on. Then we're going to combine that with the ability for cloud collaboration between SOLIDWORKS and the 3D platform experience. The ability to add next level analysis, uh, rendering, and other capabilities via this cloud, cloud platform and 3D experience. And eventually, the option for some users to do a complete cloud-based design stream um, entirely in the platform if they so choose. Today, the schedule is going to be broken up into uh, segments. This morning, we're going to have part one and part two, looking at categories from user experience, parts, assemblies, and so on, all the way up to um, data management with PDM and, and SOLIDWORKS Manage, and introducing a little bit of management capabilities and other project capabilities with 3D Experience Works. This afternoon, we're going to continue with more of the 3D Experience platform capabilities, um, showing more of the collaboration aspects, virtual prototyping, simulation, and more, and the full uh, range of capabilities for 3D Experience. Let's get started with the improvements to the user experience. With SOLIDWORKS 2021, you no longer have to choose between minimizing clutter and customizing your user interface. To complete this part, we need to cut and pattern this sketch. However, you'll notice that the sketch and part color are extremely similar. While changing these color settings has always been available within SOLIDWORKS, inside of our color options, we now have a column that previews the color for your different sketch and other element entities, making it easy for you to find the item you'd like to change. So in this case, let's go ahead and change this to green so that we can more easily see it against our gray part. Also new in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have the ability to collapse the command manager, rebuying some of that screen real estate for you to work with. Now we can go ahead and customize our quick access tools. So items like the save and print, and we can put those onto our command manager. We can also customize our shortcuts bar. So previously we did not have the ability to search for any command inside of our shortcut bar. So in this case, let's go ahead and take that circular pattern we're going to use on the S key later down the road. And let's go ahead and update our heads up toolbar with the undo and redo options. Now that we've customized the tools that we're going to use in our current workflow, let's go ahead and make the edits to our part. So first off, we'll go ahead and using the shortcut bar to make a cut out of our newly visible sketch go ahead and change it to through all. And then once again, utilizing that shortcut bar, we'll make a circular pattern around the center. Now, if we make a mistake or accidentally hit undo, no worries. New in SOLIDWORKS 2021, redo actually allows you to recreate or redo the feature. So you no longer have to go in and re-enter the feature manager tree to edit your component. So, with SOLIDWORKS 2021, we've added more ability to navigate your workflows and customize your different options without limiting your space or adding clutter. SOLIDWORKS 2021 introduces many enhancements to extend the already robust capabilities when you're working inside of part mode. Let's focus on the parts that we want to work on and take a look specifically at some sheet metal and 3MF benefits. Here, we've long been able to create an edge flange on curved edges like these on the right, but we were limited to curved edges originating from planar faces. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, edge flanges can be created on curved edges originating from non-planar faces such as those in the bend area. The preview shows the edge flange will be created all the way around the part. Familiar Flange customization tools are available to help define edge flanges such as length, angle, flange length, dimensioning methods, and flange position. This new edge flange looks great and is sure to provide more stiffness to the angle bracket. And of course, you can always flatten and export the DXF for fabrication purposes. 
The edge flange is great for structural integrity, but is also useful for enclosures and guarding areas such as this cover. The edge flange on the far side needs to protect the component this navigation control unit. Full editing capabilities are available, but we can change the direction of the flange, as well as the angle to wrap around the internal components to keep them safe. This new edge flange capability along nonlinear edges extends the robust sheet metal capabilities of SolidWorks 2021 for many applications as adding stiffness ribs and enclosures. Now let's jump over to the LED light assembly in which we need to 3D print components. New in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have extended support for 3MF files. So, going up to File and Save As, a 3MF file, you'll notice that we have the ability to export color and other options inside our 3MF. Taking a look at this file inside of Windows, we can see that the colors and textures came along for the ride in order to be more accurately 3D printed and represented. These are driven from the extended options for 3MF export, including the ability to add on additional materials and appearances. So with these enhancements to SOLIDWORKS 2021, we enhanced the foundation of SOLIDWORKS in order to work with more sheet metal features, as well as expanding support for 3MF and the growing 3D printing community. Thank you, Stephen. That was some pretty interesting uh, improvements for part design in, in SOLIDWORKS 2021. And I'll certainly use some of that. But also assemblies have gotten a lot of improvement as well, particularly when it comes to performance. Here we're going to take a look shortly at not only file open and other improvements for editability in assemblies, but also just raw graphics performance. So let's have a look. There has been for some time the ability to open assemblies in a variety of ways, large design review, lightweight, and so forth. And here we'll choose lightweight. Even though this particular assembly is uh, very nearly 2300 components, it opens in a matter of seconds in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Again, slightly less than 20 seconds to open this full assembly. Even though some of these sub-assemblies are lightweight, simply expanding the branch auto-resolves that particular item. Here, in looking at the sub-assembly, even switching configurations um, between items of the assembly, so in this case without the hardware, are much, much faster than before. Just a mere few seconds to go from any number of suppressed components or shown components. Performance valuation has added a new ability so we can see you know, what's hitting our performance for this particular assembly, but also in this case, find some circular references. And here, identify which parts and perhaps which features are contributing to the uh, overall assembly open performance. Again, the assembly is trying to resolve what's going on with that circular reference. So here we'll take a look. Um, we'll isolate the two plates that are involved. And we're doing this all from the top assembly level now. And sure enough, there's a set of hole wizard holes. And it's not bad practice, but one is probably driven from the other. And if we edit on this feature and look at its position sketch, sure enough, it has a relation concentric to the series of holes behind it. So, not necessarily a, a terrible practice in this case, but now if we again look at those same holes on the rear plate and edit that feature, looking at its position sketch, it is also referencing the other holes concentric in the other direction. Um, and notice it has no locating features. So here, it's better to remove those relations and properly dimension those whole sketch centers um, in the usual fashion with regular dimensions. And again, we're able to do this uh, quite easily um, from the assembly level without having to open the parts independently and, and so forth. And it takes a mere uh, matter of a couple of minutes to create the proper 
um, locating dimensions here at the part level uh, now that the uh, assembly performance evaluation has clued us into where the problem may lie. Similarly, for assemblies, um, D feature has been around for a few releases and continues to be enhanced in 2021. Here with the silhouette D feature method, we have some additional options now uh, that give us the exact right amount of detail for what we're doing. So in this case, we're going to uh, choose a few of the rectangular pieces, um, just get a box profile for those. And as we step through the process now, we get a nice side-by-side -side preview uh, so we can more fully anticipate the right amount of detail and see what our end result is actually going to be as we're working on it. Here in this case, you know, we'll choose a cylindrical shape as being more appropriate to the piece at hand. And we'll continue on. Um, and there, there are additional options here. So uh, even in this case, and we can grab an entire subassembly and resolve that down to be a cylindrical um, or single uh, particular body rather than an entire assembly assembly and components. And in this case, resolve, um, you know, well over 50 components into one item uh, to represent in our um, reduced detail version of this. Here also we can select individual piece parts at the assembly level and resolve those in, uh, with a nice outline again to a singular body um, in our finished uh, defeatured result. These um, pillow bracket type mounts on the front here have a little bit of detail to them. Uh, we do want to reduce them down, but perhaps in this case we want to keep a profile that's uh, more representative of the shape. So here again we'll do an um, outline and produce that. And then these last two plates, they're actually part of the interface to the upper level assembly. And so with Silhouette D feature, we still have the option here to copy them entirely, uh, particularly because we want those slot mates uh, maintained at the next level of, of assembly. Now all this work looks pretty good at this point, and now we can export it out. But what's new for 2021 is that can be a configuration of the existing file. Now when this gets down to assembly performance, is if we now look at that configuration arrangement, it is a derived configuration from where we started at the default. Now flipping back to the overall assembly, it's a matter of just selecting from the um, right click and context menu to use that defeatured item in the overall assembly rather than the original subassembly that was there. Um, so it's a matter of two mouse clicks to swap in and out the detailed version and the silhouette defeatured version in the overall assembly, making your editing time and so forth uh, much easier and faster down the road. Similarly, there's further improvements in just raw um, graphics performance between SOLIDWORKS 2020 and SOLIDWORKS 2021. So here again is that large um, 2300 piece assembly. And as we move around and so forth, we, we have the um, real view graphics on and the shadows and so forth. And what's helping this be more reasonable is that enhanced graphics option. Uh, this is now on by default in 2021, by the way. And that allows for the software to make better use of the uh, GPUs in NVIDIA card. Here our macro is spinning this 500 times. And in SOLIDWORKS 2021, it's just shy of six seconds on, on my engineering laptop. If we compare that with 2020, it's nearly four times longer, almost 24 seconds, to achieve the same 500 spin operation. That's a significant uh, 4x improvement here, hidden line removal. This has always been a problem for CAD software all the way back to the 90s. And similarly, we'll execute that same macro. And here, the numbers are even more impressive. 
2021, 500 spins. Um, again, under four seconds in this case. Compared to 2020, 100 seconds more to do that same 500 spin operation. I mean, it's truly impressive performance that you should see um, in your everyday use of SOLIDWORKS 2021. One thing that's perhaps not quite as visually noticeable is occlusion culling is also improved uh, via the enhanced graphics option in 2021. As we move this large assembly around, components that were on the far side and, and hidden from view now fully display almost instantly as we complete the uh, spin around. So there's a lot to be uh, impressed with when it comes to assembly performance in, in SOLIDWORKS 2021. I mean, file open performance, as we've seen, is, is significantly reduced. Um, the circular reference check available in the performance tool uh, helps us find problem areas and, and get to them more, much more quickly. You know, configurations, being able to switch in and out uh, within seconds. And of course, just the overall graphics performance. It, it's really a significant step in that the better your GPU card is or your, your graphics card, the better performance you're going to see overall in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Continuing with the performance theme that we've just seen in assemblies, drawing file performance is also noticeably improved in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Particularly, we're going to show a little bit about file open performance, view and sheet manipulation, graphical performance, and the fact that the enhanced graphics performance system option now has significant effect for your drawing files as well. In SOLIDWORKS 2021, we can open this drawing of all that 2,300 2, piece assembly and zoom in, zoom out, focus in on some of these uh, tighter views that show the incredible detail in the circuit boards and so forth, and it displays fairly quickly. Also for 2021, that detailing mode option enables us to open even this large drawing file in mere seconds. Again, leaving the model ge geometry out of the memory, loading just the sheets and views. Also, as noted, the system option for performance, enhanced graphics performance, which turns on some of the GPU capability in your video card, applies now equally well to drawing files as it does to assemblies. Here's that overall assembly again. Notice that we have the real view on and the shadows and, and material shadings and so forth. And normally on an assembly this large, that would be a noticeable lag in moving this around. Here we look at the comparison between the same file, SOLIDWORKS 2020 and 2021. So here in 2020, it moves pretty well, but you can notice the lag between my mouse movement and when the sheet kind of catches up to it with the pan and so forth. The same operation on 2021 is much more fluid. The sheet very well tracks every move of my mouse. Even zooming in on some of the more detailed and intricate pieces uh, performs quite well. Sliding the sheet around and grabbing the views uh, works equally well. On 2020, notice that even just highlighting the view takes a little bit of a lag and as I zoom in, you kind of see the, you know, click, click, click of, of the, the mouse wheel indices as I move about. When I switch to the sheet two in this particular drawing in 2020, it is a, a fairly detailed sheet and it takes a, a pretty good minute to open up. Again, 2300 pieces. Um, so it's a fair number of edges to display. Now, as I move around, again, here, it's a little bit more pronounced even that there is a bit of lag on the zoom and a little bit of lag on the, on the pan, and they tend to overshoot or undershoot where I'm intending to go. Now in 2021, it opens just a few seconds quicker, perhaps not as noticeable as the uh, assembly performance difference, but once this sheet is open, now my movements in 2021 are very, very fluid, uh, essentially real time in this case. Again, zoom, pan, and so forth. Um, almost exactly tracking what I'm doing with the mouse at any particular moment. 
Again, drawing performance has gained nearly as much as assembly performance in SOLIDWORKS 2021, particularly with the options for file open and the uh, detailing view mode is even quicker than it was in the last release. View and sheet display performs very, very well. And again, the, the better the video card you have, the more you're gonna notice the impact of the enhanced graphics performance system option in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Even given the nice enhancements with SOLIDWORKS drawings performance, SOLIDWORKS 2021 also makes nice improvements in the model-based definition function set. Model-based definition is in fact a methodology of doing away with the drawing entirely and placing all the product manufacturing information directly within the 3D file, be it a part or an assembly. Most notably for 2021, datum targets and sheet metal bend tables are two of the key enhancements that help drive the functionality and make it useful to perhaps a new range of engineers and designers. So let's have a look. Here we see a model-based definition uh, sheet metal part and as you can see, the dimensions, the GTALs, and other items are fully uh, represented in the 3D file, no separate drawing file needed. And in this case, we can actually look at the uh, reference planes and so forth that are in fact a key part of the datums on this part. Now for 2021, um, if we switch to the appropriate view here, we can actually apply datum targets for our QC inspectors. Um, to help ensure consistency from setup to setup and part to part. We can have options for uh, the style, uh, the shape of the target, the size of the, the actual target element, um, and place those anywhere on the part that we should like. In this case, using three points to define the datum plane that is the bottom of this sheet metal piece. The center locations for those datum targets can be constrained with dimensions and with the full control of any SOLIDWORKS dimension. Even though these two uh, datum targets were created previously, we can always go back and look at the properties for this annotation and change the style, set a uh, target zone shape and size, and, and fully uh, prepare this for the, um, the CMM operator or whatever uh, measurement uh, the QC person might be making. So a lot of nice detail there. Should make it clearer for your downstream inspection. Now similarly, this being a sheet metal part, we've had had flat pattern capability in the 3D views previously, but new for 2021 is we can now incorporate the bend table information as well. Um, in a nice tab tabulated format that looks more like a, a BOM. And when we do publish to the full PDF, we actually have options now with a new template to better represent that information in the published output as well. Not only can we uh, attach the step file that the manufacturer will compare his form to, but we can also attach, in this case, the 2D DXF that they would like to have for their laser cutting operation to produce the initial piece. And with one file transmission of the enhanced model-based definition published 3D PDF, our vendor or partner or even our own internal machine shop gets all the information, both 3D and 2D, uh, to fully produce this sheet metal bracket. And if we, we refer to the attachments, we can actually open up that DXF and view it with any appropriate DXF viewer that might be local, be it e-drawings or in this case, our own draft site. And now we have a laser cut outline fully prepared um, and included with that original MBD output. So with the new datum target support and bend tables in uh, 3D PDF uh, published output from MBT, it now makes the um, usability uh, and, and targetability of MBD available for more engineers and designers. Going further on, uh, perhaps alternatives to drawings, Stephen will now introduce a little bit more on what's new with e-drawings. Thank you, John. 
Now let's take a look at another method we can use to consume our SOLIDWORKS data in eDrawings. eDrawings has always excelled at giving you creative ways to share your 3D concepts while also protecting your intellectual property. In eDrawings 2021, we now have even more ways in order to communicate information without losing your IP. First off, we have the ability to work with the SOLIDWORKS configuration specific custom properties, meaning that your information in your model is readily available within eDrawings itself. Also, we have an increased capability with the measure tool. Now, the measure tool is able to measure two cylindrical or circular objects, center to center, but you can also see maximum and minimum distances inside of eDrawings 2021. This is a great enhancement in order to be able to more easily work with your model. We can also do planes to circular entities. So here we can see that the normal distance between that plane and the center. We're also able to save out our file into an HTML file with expanded capabilities in 2021. So when we go to save, notice that we can enable measurement inside of our HTML model. Jumping over into any web browser, in this case Chrome, you can see that we have our file loaded as an HTML, and we're able to basically use eDrawings same way as we always have. So here we're able to navigate around the model. We have the measurement capabilities that you would expect inside of eDrawings because of that checkbox we enabled on output. So you can quite easily communicate with customers or suppliers measurements that you need via a readily accessible HTML. And finally, you are able to move and investigate specific components quite easily without any necessary installation or versioning. So with eDrawings 2021, it's even easier now to collaborate and communicate with your customers and suppliers using the enhanced features of measurement and the enhanced HTML tools. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you over to Chung Ping to talk about plastics. Thank you, Steven. It's good to know that as of today, we have so much more that we can do with e-drawings, including options to publish documents on the internet, plus some enhancements to them. I have a little surprise for you. A new viewer is coming for the 2021 release, and we'll see that later. It's now time to see what's new in Flow Simulation 2021. There are many to show. Most of these will help you be more productive in your analysis creation and the results interpretation as well. And here comes my favorite part. We already know that it's possible to use the rotating region feature to take into account a fluid driving motion due to components that are rotating. We also introduced the free surface flow in a previous version to analyze a mixture of immiscible fluids. In Flow Simulation 2021, it's now possible to combine, to combine both of these features in the same analysis, which is required here. Let's have a look at the results and see some more new features. This is what we are solving a problem involving two separate fluids in interaction. We define goals to track the torque and the power in this project. We can then get these results as a function of time, as we already know. In Flow Simulation 2021, there are now new columns next to each other's to provide the information on the maximum value and when exactly it occurs. Suppose we have different plots that we would like to reuse in other projects. Transferring this information to other projects is much easier and faster now in Flow Simulation 2021. After showing the plots, simply create a scene template that will store these plots. Now in another project, we see that we don't have any plots to show. By using the create plots from scene feature, it's possible to bring all plots created from that scene to this project 
or even in multiple projects. Yes, it also works in a project from a different model. Let's now have a look at this enclosure where we created a heat transfer analysis to study the temperature on components. In fact, we have a problem similar to a heat sink. We want to make sure that the maximum allowed temperature is not exceeded. We introduced the flux plot in a previous version, which is very useful to determine where the heat is coming from for each component and where it's going. A new option is available to group all items by type, and this allows to check the energy balance more easily and ensure that the study has fully converged. When creating a plot using the crop region option to better investigate on a local area, the min and max values can be linked to the values from the crop region when using the automatic plot min max option so you don't need to manually adjust the numbers. Now for goals, it's possible to calculate the min, max, and average from a selection of goals. In this example, you will be able to quickly find out the maximum temperature across all of the batteries and PCBs easily. Remember the custom visualization parameters? It's now possible to use them in other custom visualization parameters. Yes, in this formula for calculating calculating the dew point temperature, we are referring to another custom visualization parameter by inserting it in an equation. It's now much faster and easier than ever to create your flow simulation analysis to validate your design. We can also make them even more realistic with the additional enhancements to the physical features. Speaking about the flow, let's jump to the next subjects, the, the next subject where I will show you how easy it is for the plastic to flow inside the mold with SolarWorks Plastics 2021. So we've just had a look at some new features and enhancements to discover how much faster and easier we can handle flow simulation analysis in 2021. With the combination of the rotating region and the free surface flow, we can solve even more realistic problems. Let's keep the focus and venture into SOLIDWORKS Plastics. This year, the interface is once again improved to make it more user-friendly. But we have more than just that. Let's now have a look at SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2021. We now have a new injection molding process to accommodate multiple material over molding. This is perfect for parts like this that will require a soft protective covering molded over the rigid plastic. It's now possible to define the whole analysis before creating the mesh. Let's start with the material selection for each injection process. Over 300 new materials from global manufacturers have been added to our materials library in SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2021. For the first injection, one of the new ABS materials from BASF will be used for the main body. For the second injection process, we will use another new material, a thermal plastic for the soft protective cover selected from the recently used list. Once the material have, has been applied for each injection process, we simply need to assign them to their associated domain. ABS to the body part and TPE to the over mold geometry. SOLIDWORKS Plastics makes it easy to define other critical elements in your plastics analysis as well. For instance, you can define cooling channels without the need to physically model the mold. SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2021 significantly improves your simulation results by creating more realistic baffles and bubblers within these virtual coding channels. All you need to worry about are the specifications for each type, which include parameters like the outer diameter, the height, and the thickness of the blade in the baffle channel. And also, you need the inner diameter of the tube 
in the, bab in the bubbler channel. You can define a runner system in the virtual mall just like the cooling channels. This allows you to analyze and look at multiple scenarios for your injection process before investing time and energy into designing and modeling the complex components of the mold itself. Just like the part geometry, all other domains can now have their materials applied to them prior to the meshing phase, allowing you to fully specify the components in your plastic injection analysis. Bounding conditions, boundary conditions such as the injection locations can also be defined directly on the 3D model without the need for meshing any geometry. By referencing the geometry itself instead of the mesh, instead of the mesh, it saves time in setting up different design scenarios as well as automatically updating when the 3D model itself changes. Other boundary conditions such as the clamp force direction can be defined. In fact, all of the boundary conditions in the plastic study can be defined geometrically this way. This includes other design elements such as the cooling channel inputs. Now comes the time to create the mesh after the analysis definition is done, as it is usually a phase that precedes the calculations. In fact, the multi, the multi-material over molding process that we used earlier requires a solid mesh for the analysis. The entire plastics analysis has been defined geometrically and virtually. This makes the file on disk smaller, portable, and more adaptive to changes. Eventually, you will when when you do mesh the model in preparation for the final simulation you will immediately see the benefit of those improved baffles and bubblers defined earlier. They are now fully meshed and modeled appropriately, giving you more accurate simulation cooling results without the need to fully, to fully model the cooling channels and the physical components that make up those special inserts. After the calculations complete, we get to see the results for all four essential phases in, in the plastic injection molding, available in Solrix plastics. The flow, the pack, the cooling, and the warp phases. Of course, these results include the new multi-material overmold injection process for more accuracy, giving you confidence in your injection molding process before you start designing or investing time and money into the mold itself. For the warp results, we have the total stress displacement, the sink mark profile, and many more to show. With Solrix Plastics 2021, we brought the plastic injection molding analysis to another level. It's now easier than ever to handle your analysis to help on the validation from design to manufacturing. But it doesn't stop here for our solutions related to manufacturing. The time has come to give the floor to Steven for SolidWorks CAM. Thank you, Chung Ping. Let's take a look at another popular fabrication method in SolidWorks CAM. As production scales, you may need to expand your capabilities to include manufacturing. A recent redesign of the sensor mounting bracket is a perfect opportunity to put SolidWorks CAM to work. A default stock bounding box fits perfectly about the finished part. But new in SolidWorks CAM 2021, we can set up a predefined bounding box, which gives you the ability to represent standard rectangular stock. In our case, let's look at a six inch piece of six inch wide, three eighths inch, 6061 bar. This is going to be a typical piece of stock purchased from your local metal dealer. Then, we'll go ahead and save and update your go-to sizes through the technology database, even classifying which material it is and the link that you can buy it from. Uh, you can also set it to be the default material, which is going to allow you to save time when setting up your stock down the road. Now, before we do a feature recognition, we'll go ahead and just set up the coordinate system on where we want to have the zero of our part B in this corner here on our stock bar. 
And then we'll use the feature recognition in order to identify features and generate the tool paths for our part in less than a minute. In this case, we can go in and actually simulate the toolpath to see exactly what our database generated in terms of the pathing and tooling for our uh, machining operation. In this case, looking good so far, but I want to customize my drilling operations. New in SolidWorks 2021, we have an extended ability to define PEC parameters with respect to the tool diameter or the flute length. This gives you more point-to-point -point control over exactly how you want to operate your mill and how you want to drill out your part. Now, we can take this one step further and even update the tech database in order to capture our best practices and prevent ourselves from making manual edits in the future. Going into the technology database, we simply find which operation we want to edit, and we'll go in and change our pecking type or strategy to be a variable peck. And all we're doing here is making sure that down the road, whenever we have a drill uh, operation that is going to use a peck, we're going to use what we consider to be the safest and most consistent practices. As it turns out, it turns out there's a overstock of eight inch wide bar rather than the six inch bar that is on back order. So all we have to do is go in and edit the stock and grab the eight inch stock from our tech database. And when we go to rebuild our part, when we go back into SOLIDWORKS CAM, where it's going to prompt us with the information and features that are going to be modified, SOLIDWORKS CAM is gonna do all the heavy lifting and we're going to have our tool paths automatically generated for the new stock size. So speaking of updates, what if we wanna switch over to a circular material? New in SOLIDWORKS 2021, cylindrical stock is generated automatically. So CAM is going to go ahead and fit a minimum diameter and thickness to your component, which then of course you can change to match up to whatever stock you're purchasing. So in this case, an 8 inch aluminum uh, circular stock. And when we update, you'll notice that we post correctly. We didn't have to do any of the heavy lifting or manual reprogramming. Instead, SOLIDWORKS CAM automatically updates. Now, if you're working with other users, you'll notice that we have the ability in SOLIDWORKS 2021 to map the CAM posts to be a network location. So you're able to have all of your coworkers and colleagues working from the same posts and be very consistent in that manner. So with SOLIDWORKS 2021, you're able to give your manufacturing floor more automation with expanded stock options, enhanced drill options, and control over where you're managing your posts. So be sure to explore how SOLIDWORKS CAM can power up your everyday milling and turning. Now, to pass you back over to Chung Ping to look at electrical and routing. Thank you, Stephen. It's really special that SOLIDWORKS CAM, as smart as it is, can be even smarter by continuing to enrich itself with the user preferences in its database. With all of these new features this year, the solution just keeps getting better. It's now time to electrify you with our new features and enhancements in SOLIDWORKS Electrical and SOLIDWORKS Routing as well. I mentioned earlier that I have a little surprise for you. So there we go. New in 2021, you can view an electrical project by using the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Viewer, just like with eDrawings that we already know. You will be able to view different electrical drawings, such as diagrams, schemes, and many more, as an electrical or non-electrical user. It's also possible to get some reports and export them to any of the or any of the drawings to different formats. You can now add a new viewer to your list of solutions. Now back to the schematic. New in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2021, we improved cables properties by including the new field separate 3D route assembly to add more flexibility to the designers. The same parameter can also be controlled in SOLIDWORKS route ca cable command to provide maximum flexibility to users on how and where they want to initiate this new parameter. 
We know that it is a common practice to have multiple cables starting from a single connector and then have each of the, of the cables go to different parts of, this, of a, the electrical system. This new option allowed us to route these two cables at once and as separate assemblies. If everything we design was only a square or rectangular shape, we will never need to use splines. In the electrical world, the path of electrical wiring and harnessing can take many forms, including lines and splines. In SolarX Electrical 2021, we enhanced the route harness functionality to now support the use of splines, in addition to lines to create route paths. We created a route path using both splines and lines for the harness that connects the transducer to go under already routed cables and follow along the wall. To reduce waste of material from cutting three conductors shorter than the longest wire, we can add a splice to the wire so all conductors in the, the harness are cut to equal length. Supporting splines along with the lines and arcs in creating a routing pa path greatly improves the versatility of routing electrical harnesses in geometrically complex products. In SolarWorks Electrical 2021, we enhanced the route edit through clip functionality. We want this enclosure to be tidy and secure. However, the red and green wires are only partially secured through a few clips. To finish the work, let's edit the route and choose the route edit through clip tool. We can then select the axis of the clip and the wires we want to route through that clip. In the Property Manager, New Arrange Routes section allows you to manually arrange wires with user-defined offset, merge route to a single point, or auto-arrange the routes. We will repeat the process for the clip on the other end to secure both these wires through that clip. It's just that easy. Also new in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2021, you can associate a specific terminal symbol used in a terminal drawing either to a manufacturer part or to a terminal symbol used in a schematic. This allows you to define the wire terminals to use with a specific terminal strip for greater control and design accuracy. There you have it. SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2021 will certainly provide more flexibility to your electrical design and will also allow any users to view your drawings. This ends the first part on what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Stay tuned, there will be more. We have a second part on the design, documentation, the simulation, and management. We will also have a third part on the 3D experience.